Thanks for tuning in. It's been a little while since I've made an Indonesian recipe, so today I decided to make ayam besenge, a flavorful, slightly spicy chicken dish. Hi, I'm Tuan. Welcome to my kitchen. If you're new to this channel, I focus on cooking foods from my home country, the Netherlands, and some of its former colonies, such as Indonesia. Today's dish, ayam besenge, is chicken cooked in a yellow coconut sauce. It has lots of spices and herbs in it and is absolutely delicious. It also is known as ayam kuning. Now, besenge means happy, so that would mean happy chicken, and kuning means yellow, so yellow chicken. Like many Indonesian recipes, we start with a bumbu, a spice paste. Let's go over those ingredients. You will need one tablespoon of turmeric, two teaspoons of ground coriander, half a teaspoon of ground cumin, one teaspoon of gula jawa or palm sugar. If you cannot find that, you can use light brown sugar, half a teaspoon of white pepper, half a teaspoon of salt, one onion, tamarind water, which I made by dissolving one teaspoon of tamarind puree in one tablespoon of hot water. If you cannot find tamarind puree, you can mix two teaspoons of lime juice with two teaspoons of water, two red chilies. I am using Fresno chilies that I've de-seeded, three cloves of garlic, one slice of ginger, two slices of galangal, and two scallions. I just want to take a moment to explain the difference between ginger and galangal. I think we all know ginger. Right? It has this really pungent smell. I quite love it. Uh, galangal is larger, is a lot harder, has a lemony, earthy smell. They're both rhizomes, but you can't substitute one for the other. So if you cannot find galangal, just omit it. I typically find it in the Asian grocery store, either fresh in the produce section or already cut in pieces in the freezer. The rest of the ingredients you will need are one and a half kilos of chicken. I'm using chicken breast cut in chunks, but you can use chicken thigh meat as well. One onion, one red chili. Again, I'm using Fresnos here that I've de-seeded. One stalk of lemongrass and one can or 400 milliliters of coconut milk. Please make sure that you're using whole fat coconut milk because we're actually going to use some of that fat to fry the bumbu in. We're going to start by making the bumbu. First, I have to cut the scallions, um, the light part, but don't throw away the dark part uh, because we're going to use it later. Cut off the roots, we won't need those. And then just cut the light part into chunks like this. Don't drop it on the floor. And I will use these later. And I'm going to cut my onion into chunks as well, just to make it easier to puree them. Hold on, one second. So we don't have to cut the onion into small pieces. Just, I typically cut it in half one way and then in three pieces the other direction. And now we're gonna make the spice paste. I'm using a food processor for this. Of course, traditionally, this is done with a mortar and pestle. I'm gonna start by putting my onion in the bowl followed by the scallion, the ginger, galangal, and garlic, the peppers, and then all these spices. Be careful putting them in so you don't get a cloud of spices in the air, which I've done before, so learn from my mistakes. And now all of that. And last, the tamarind water. Okay. I'm going to put the lid on here. We're going to pulse this until it forms the paste. You may have to open it up and scrape the sides down every so often, just to make sure the blades get to touch everything. I'm going to take a look at it to see if we still need to keep going. I think we do, but let me just kind of move it around with my spatula. It's getting pretty smooth, but I think just a little bit longer is what it will take. So I scrape it all down and get the stuff that's on the lid as well back in the bowl. All right, I'm going to give it a few more pulses and then I think it'll be ready. Okay. 
Let's take a look at it one more time. Yeah, this is a beautiful paste. Okay, this is ready. I've taken the bowl off my food processor and I'm gonna transfer the paste into a glass bowl. And then I'm going to rinse this really thoroughly to make sure it doesn't stain yellow any more than it already is. It smells really good, but uh, our onions are quite potent, so I'm, I'm fighting back my tears right now. <laughs> I'm going to set this aside until we're ready to cook. Before we can go to the stove, we have to finish preparing the rest of the ingredients. I'm going to start by bruising the lemongrass. You've seen me do that before and tying it into a knot. This is going to make some noise and I'm using my handy mallet again. Okay. We bruise it to really bring the, the essence of lemongrass out into the dish. You can really smell that lemony uh, fragrance. Any really big loose pieces, take them off so that they don't end up in your dish because you don't want to chew on this. So done with that. And now I'm going to cut my onion. I'm going to dice the onion. So I'm cutting off the stem part and then cut it in half. Take off the paper. And then we're going to make cuts like this. And then we're going to make two cuts parallel to the cutting board. Careful of your fingers. And then when you cut this way, you get a beautiful dice. Going to put the diced onion in a bowl. And I'm going to dice the chili pepper and put it in the same bowl. First you cut it in strips, lay them all parallel to each other and then chop across. Last, I'm going to cut the dark green part of the scallion into small little rings. And now we're ready to go to the stove. First thing I'm going to do is put a tablespoon of the thick layer on top of the coconut milk in my cast iron wok. If you don't have a wok, you can use a, a large Dutch oven for this. And now over medium high heat, I'm going to melt this. You can move it around if you want to, to make sure the entire bottom of your pan is coated. And you'll see little bubbles like right there. That is some of the coconut water or liquid that is in this layer uh, boiling out. So that's good. You want to wait until that has mostly stopped before you add the spice paste. As you can see, it will turn clear just like this. Make sure that you have your fan on because this is going to be really potent. We're going to add the paste. And we're going to stir it constantly and cook it for a few minutes. So what we're doing is cooking those raw spices and really uh, bringing out all the flavors of the different ingredients of this paste. Keep it moving because you don't want it to burn. When you smell the raw paste, the onion is really strong. By cooking it, you're mellowing that out as well. You can see that the paste is drying out and that is a good sign. It's time for the next ingredient, which are the diced onion and chili peppers. And we're going to cook those for a few minutes as well until the onions turn glassy. I can tell that the onions are turning glassy. So now it's time to add the chicken. Gonna give this a good stir. You want the chicken to just sear a little bit like that white, what you're seeing, or well, the, the yellow that shows that the outside is starting to get cooked and you want that for all the pieces. You also wanna make sure that every piece of chicken is coated with the spice paste. 
For this dish, I actually like to use these bigger pieces of chicken. It's more rustic, but I really like it, especially since we're going to cook this down for a while. And this way I don't have to worry about it drying out too much. Looking at this, you can definitely tell why the other name for this dish is yellow chicken. It's already smelling really good. You're not just smelling the onion, you're smelling all the other spices and ingredients and the combination just smells great. All of the chicken has a nice yellow exterior. So I'm gonna lower the heat to low and add my coconut milk. Stir it through, break up those thick pieces and make sure that most of your chicken is covered. You know you're done stirring when the liquid is all the same color. Like I can still tell that some of it is lighter than other parts of it. So just gently stir it around. Make sure that all the coconut milk is properly incorporated and mixing with the spice paste and the chicken. Now the last thing I have to do is add my lemongrass to this. I'm gonna nestle it in there. Make sure it's mostly covered with the sauce. We're gonna leave this on low heat until the chicken is fully cooked and uh, just check it every so often and give it a stir. You can cut open one of the pieces of chicken if you have to, to make sure that it's done. I'll be back in a little bit. It's been half an hour, so let's check to see if the chicken is done. I'm gonna try to find a big piece to cut open and see if it's fully cooked. Not quite, still a little pink on the inside. So this is gonna go in and we're gonna cook it for another 15 minutes and then we'll check again. It's been another 15 minutes. So let me find a large piece of chicken to check. Okay. All right, that chicken is done. So put it back in the pan. The sauce needs to cook down a little bit more to my liking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to remove the chicken, put it in the glass bowl, and then I'm going to turn the heat up to medium high and let the sauce reduce uh, by about a third. So take the chicken out. If you don't get all the pieces of chicken, not the end of the world. I'm just trying to prevent these from overcooking in the pot when I increase the heat. It smells really good. <laughs> okay, that's all the chicken, what I can tell. So I'm now going to increase the heat to medium high and let the sauce reduce by about a third. I'm gonna keep an eye on it and uh, stir it frequently. Then when it is reduced, I'm going to remove the lemongrass and put the chicken back in. The liquid has reduced by a third. So now I'm going to remove the lemongrass carefully, lower the heat. Just let the sauce fall off of it. A lot of goodness in there. Look through the sauce, make sure there's no straggling pieces of lemongrass. And there aren't. Now I'm going to put the chicken back in. I'm not gonna dump it in because that will cause it to splash. I'm gonna leave this on the stove over low heat for a few minutes to just warm the chicken back up a little bit and then we will add the scallions and it will be time to taste. Okay, the chicken has warmed through. Adding the scallions. Let's take it over to the table for tasting. Here's my finished dish. As you can see, it's nice and yellow and there is little flecks of red from the chili pepper little pieces of green from the scallion. The onions have cooked down. You cannot really tell they're, they're in there. And of course, there's the chicken that is also nice and bright and yellow. So let's scoop some up. You may notice that I'm wearing a different color shirt right now. That is because while this was cooking, some of the sauce uh, splashed on my blue shirt. So um, put it in the wash and I'll put on a black shirt instead. I'm gonna move this to the side. Now, normally I would serve this with rice and some steamed vegetables, broccoli, maybe even asparagus or string beans. But right now I'm just gonna eat it as is. I'm gonna start with a piece of chicken. Make sure there's sauce and scallions on there. It's my Mmm. So good. You can tell the lemony flavor from the, from the lemongrass. There is that 
turmeric flavor and you can definitely tell there's onion in there. It is quite spicy today. So the, the Fresno peppers I used were probably a little bit spicier than they normally are. If you don't like overly spicy food, just use one um, pepper in the boom boo and don't add extra at the end. But this is absolutely delicious. I can't wait to finish it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like and subscribe button and don't forget to share it with your friends. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. You'll find a written recipe on my website, twanskitchen.com, and you can follow me on social media as well. If you make this recipe, I would love it if you take a photo of it and post it on Instagram with the hashtag twanskitchen. I will feature it in my story and on my website. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.